Hello Libra, welcome to your 2020 horoscope forecast for the sun or the ascendant. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Please also click or tap the bell notification. This year begins with a solar return. And the solar return does put a lot of emphasis on the part of your situation to do with your home, family, security, where you live, who you live there with, or perhaps even the potential for you to work from home. All this energy has been going on for some time now, principally because of the role of Pluto, the planet of transformation, which has been in this sector for 12 years. Saturn, of course, has been in the sign of Capricorn, your fourth solar house, for the last two years. Now, Saturn has brought a more stringent, restrictive energy to bear, whereas Pluto is very much about change and transformation. Now, Saturn can be a positive factor in the sense that it makes us focus on what's really essential, but of course it can create barriers, obstacles and limitations. But as we start this new year, the backdrop which will go right into the whole 12 months for you is incredibly positive for you in lots of different ways. I'd like to flag up the role of your ruler first of all. Venus, the planet of love and attraction, gives you that natural graciousness, appreciation of the arts and your diplomatic manner. And it's in your sister air sign of Aquarius as this year commences. So it points towards the potential for you to be more self-expressive right through 220 and also the potential for an improvement in your love life. But also as this year begins, the moon, the part of our situation which is to do with how receptive we are to others and our immediate environment, that's in the practical sixth house in the sign of Pisces. But it's alongside Neptune uh, the dreamy and rather ethereal influence. And the combination between them means that this can be a year when you could continue to be pretty self-sacrificing towards other people. You may also have a big desire to live near water with this combination. But the midpoint between the moon in Pisces and also the sun in Capricorn as we go through the turn of the year is in Aquarius and it's right beside that Venus position. So this means that self-expressive fifth house, which is very much to do with your hopes and wishes, is going to be strongly manifested by your ruler. And this gives you a marvelous platform to take into the new year. Now, obviously Christmas can be an expensive exercise, especially if you've got kids. And as you begin this new year, Mars, the planet of desire, is in your sector of everyday resources, money, and also the things that you desire. This could see you hitting the sales over the festivities, but also it can give you a determination right through 2020 to better your lot. Now that clustering of energy that we have in Capricorn also includes Jupiter this year which moved last November into the sign of Capricorn. It is in full here, it's not its best location, but Jupiter is still about expansion, but because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, it's about caution. So we could say cautious expansion. So it's possible that someone close to you could be considering adding to their family, or perhaps if that's what you want, Jupiter can be very helpful in this regard for you. However, at the very turn of the year, Uranus, the planet of surprises, which had been shaking up your sector of relationships for so long, continues its journey in your eighth solar house, which is much more to do with deeper commitments. And there's a paradox there because Uranus is very much to do with being individualistic. But that's forging a great link to Jupiter and also Mercury in the sign of Capricorn as we begin this year. So it's possible that something profoundly different but positive can happen to where you live this year. Maybe it's going to be a chance opportunity to find your proverbial dream home or you're finally going to get renovations made to your own existing abode or perhaps it is going to be some kind of good news linked to the family at large. 
But also as we start this new year, the uh, r role of Saturn and Pluto is really pivotal because by the 10th, uh, they are going to be taking part in the lunar eclipse, which foments in the sign of Cancer. But before then, on the 3rd, Mars bursts its way into your third solar house. And for six weeks, gives you an opportunity to be thinking and articulating your ideas with real passion and verve. But that brings us to that very tender collection of energies because by the 10th, Mercury's moved forwards and it's alongside Saturn and Pluto, and of course, also the Sun, but the asteroid called Ceres, which is very much to do with nurturing. All of this in your fourth house. But Saturn next to Ceres is not much fun. So there may be an ambition that you have that comes close to the surface in your emotions on the 10th, on the back of this annular lunar eclipse in Cancer, providing a backdrop of energy for the next six months, where you might feel that there's some kind of limitation. It's not actually going to transform as you would like. Or there may be some cost to that transformation. But bear with it, the year can still come back to you as far as that home energy. And by the 12th, Saturn and Pluto are absolutely exact. Now, I have seen them as being very close together for about nine months, uh, nine and a half months by this point. They've been within three degrees. Some astrologers are absolutely focused on when they're exact, and that is on the 12th. But on the 14th, well, your ruling planet Venus is going to be relocating into the sixth solar house of your chart, into Pisces, where she's exalted. A lovely transit takes place lasting 28 days. And that could see you, if you are trying to make, um, uh, make the best of the sales that are going on, slaffling some practical things that can uh, aid and assist your level of comfort and the organisation you have in your home situation. But that combination between Saturn and Pluto could lead to a crunch point in some kind of emotional dynamic. If there is a relationship that isn't working, that's very close to you, it's probably going to peak at that point. However, on the 17th, Mercury moves to replace Venus in Aquarius. This is a lovely transit for you. You can start to feel more outgoing. The Sun joins Aquarius on the 21st. On the 23rd, there's a superb new moon, and you can end this month feeling quite playful. And maybe if your home life is together and you're happy, you could be inviting people around for some kind of gathering, even so early in the new year. It is true that Mars goes on to clash with Neptune towards the end of this month, and with Mars now in your sector of thoughts, but also actions, clashing with Neptune in the part of your scope to do with health, fitness and diet, it's best not to overdo anything as January comes to a close. I'd just like to tell you about two other things that are going to be going on this year that are going to have a profound influence upon you. From the 4th of April through to the 7th of August, your ruling planet Venus is going to be tracking through the sign of Gemini, which is your sister air sign and your ninth house. If you travel during that period of time, it could turn out to be a remarkably vivid and uplifting experience. On the other hand, this can also be a period of time where if you're single, you can connect to someone new who has something about them that really captivates you. But also, in the second half of this year, Mars, the planet of passion and desire, is going to be in your opposite sign. So there are going to be some complications that come from that transit. It is going to clash with some of the planets in Capricorn. And your sun will also go into a square with those Capricornian planets when uh, you go through your sun transit and also the new moon in Libra. But generally, Mars being in your opposite sign is going to make you a lot feistier about what you want from relationships and a lot more assertive. So if there is a tie that survives this January connection between Saturn and Pluto and the lunar eclipse, there's still going to be other options for you to expand your horizons. Or if you're single, there could be the chance to really meet someone who most certainly makes your pulse race. 
The one thing that 2020 promises not to be for you is dull, but that sees us make our way through till February. So as the month begins, the Sun and Mercury are still in the fabulous fifth house, the sign of Aquarius, but on the third, Mercury does advance forwards into Pisces. Mercury going through Pisces is not at its best, I can only be really honest with you, and there is also going to be a retrograde which begins on the 17th. When it comes to work, sacrifice and obligations, you could find yourself rethinking in the second half of this month particularly. This can be especially so if you have been very self-sacrificing and it's not being appreciated by someone where you've really committed to the cause. But on the 8th, there is a magnificent moment for you when your ruler moves into your opposite sign. It combines with Chiron and that is the wounded healer in the early stages of Aries. If there is a relationship that needs some care and perhaps some nurturing and nourishing, this is a fine time to be really focusing on trying to find the ways that you can be uh, show a greater level of simpatico or it could draw someone new and magical into your life. The ninth does see a full moon in Leo, your sector of sociability, and that is going to be clashing with the sun, and in turn, they're both angling in a sharp way to Uranus. It's just saying to you that when it comes to your desires, it's going to be important not to be too impulsive, I feel, in the following two weeks. But on the 16th, Mars moves into a magnificent location, the sign of Capricorn. This is going to help you to be a bit more bullish when it comes to um, the things you do want to achieve at the very heart of your life. It's going to be important for six weeks not to be too defensive at times, but in general, Mars really thrives in Capricorn. If you have thoughts of working from home, this can see you very productive to make that happen. The 17th, as I said, sees Mercury turn into a retrograde with its usual potential for cross wires, misunderstanding and so on, particularly linked to appointments, pets, aunts and uncles, and also your job. But on the 18th, we have a marvellous development because after 11 months of being very closely allied, Saturn and Pluto finally start to come apart. They're still going to be at times both, in, of course, in Capricorn this year, but not quite so directly in touch with each other. I think this will lessen some of the power dynamics and restriction that Saturn has been visiting upon you in terms of your emotional life and sense of well-being. But on the 19th, the Sun makes its way into Pisces. And this can assist Mercury's retrograde in terms of helping you to be very realistic about what you need to achieve, and most of all, try to overcome any disorganisation that Mercury tr may try to throw your way. And the Sun can give you a real drive to act out any New Year's resolutions to do with health, diet, fitness and uh, nutrition. However, it is true to say that in the second half of this month, the Mar Mars forges a brilliant link with both the Sun and also Uranus. So this is an opportunity for you to think around the areas that give you a sense of, of security, but how you can make practical changes, and some of them can be quite innovative coming through the guise of Uranus. On the 23rd, the new moon combines with black moon Lilith, which is about our desires. If your desires are not to do the job you're in, it's certainly a time to rethink in the following month. The 24th to the 27th sees Mercury and the Sun coming together, as Mercury retreats and the Sun advances. Your eye for detail is going to be improved by this, but don't jump to any conclusions if anyone shares any work-based gossip. Venus, your ruler, does square up with Jupiter, however, in the last week. And as much as you may have enthusiasm for a particular person or a particular property-based idea, someone close to you may not share that enthusiasm and best to try to stay grounded. Now, as we enter March, so with the Sun and also Mercury rotating backwards in Pisces, 
the thinking is still going to be about your structure, your life structure. But on the fourth, actually Mercury inverses back into the sign of Aquarius. If you're feeling that your creative potential is not being tapped through where you give most of your uh, commitment, that might be something that you start to think about modifying, looking out for different opportunities in your field, but applying your skill set in a slightly different way. But on the fifth, Venus returns to the other sign it governs, apart from yours, which is Taurus. And it also, as it does so, combines with Uranus. Now for about five days, this could be a magical opportunity to connect with someone rather mystical and magical and even intense uh, as far as your love life is concerned. Whether this would turn out to be a lasting bond or not is hard to say because Uranus is very, very quick moving, but it can create an opportunity. It can also create an opportunity around finance. If you're open-minded, Uranus is going to be blessing your long-term finances or a business situation all through this year. Now, on the 9th, an incredibly important event occurs because Jupiter moves alongside Pluto, and it's going to be there until the 4th of December this year. People who have Jupiter conjunct Pluto in their natal horoscopes or sextile or trine, other enabling aspects, often are hugely successful. Now this aspect is being applied in your home family emotional zone. So I think the Saturn restriction, which has been pretty punishing at times over the last couple of years, makes way for the potential for growth, for you to become much more confident about the changes that you're making in your inner being and also your outer environment. It is true to say, however, that from the 5th through to the 11th, the Sun is alongside Neptune. Your energy could just drop off a little bit. Try to limit the amount of obligations you have at this time, because although you can be very kindly, you could easily feel rather overwhelmed. The ninth sees a full moon in the sign of Virgo, which is tucked up right behind you, so your 12th solar house. But it does link positively with that Jupiter and Pluto conjunction. I think the suggestion here is that at work, if there is any skullduggery going on and you feel that there's not a great environment or atmosphere, listen to your inner voice. It's probably not going to fail you. And if you feel that you need to move somewhere where you can flourish more, then don't just soldier on. I think because of that energy between the Moon and Neptune at the start of this year, being too much of a giver is something you really need to guard against all through this year. On the 10th, Mercury goes forwards in Aquarius, but on the 16th returns back to Pisces, and then by the 29th comes out of shadow. So I think if there has been some thinking about what to do about that work situation, I think it will start to get resolved by the end of the month. Now the 20th is an incredibly important event, it's the vernal equinox, it's the start of the new astrological year, and it also is the time when the sun moves into your opposite sign. This is brilliant for your relationship prospects in the following month. It can help you to demonstrate your natural decorous approach to relating, but it's also pushing you to be a bit more assertive about your boundaries. But if you have got a desire to meet someone, this is going to put some wind in your sails. Now, on the 22nd, Saturn moves into Aquarius. This is something to really, really look forward to. It's going to be here through to the end of June. And it is true that Saturn moving into your fifth solar house can be uh, tough. It can make you think very carefully about romance and your personal expression. But it's also getting away from all that energy in the fourth house, which has really had quite a load for you to bear around your emotional situation. On the 24th, the new moon in Aries is another thing to really welcome for the next month uh, through till around about the middle of uh, April, you have a real opportunity to thrive, to demonstrate to people that you're great to be with and fun to interact with too. On the 31st, a really key event, 
Mars moves into Aquarius. If you cast your mind back to 2018, Mars was in Aquarius for an extended period of time, but it was clashing with Uranus for all of that time, and that caused quite a lot of tensions. I think this time, uh, Mars is going to be much more helpful to you. It is combining for the first five days of April with Saturn in a way which is going to see you take an idea of, you, of yours, a, 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 a creative strand, very much more seriously, but you can really do well if you work painstakingly hard. As we come into April, if you remember before, I flagged up the fact that on the 4th of April, Venus would be gliding into the sign of Gemini. Here she can be really flirty and fun. You can mix and mingle. You can want to discover. You can also want to get at the truth of relationship scenarios, but it gives you a real appreciation of culture, of the arts, of performance. So a four month, chance to really enjoy this magical transit. It's not going to be without a complication, of course. It's going to go into retrograde, uh, but essentially really enjoy this. This is very unusual. Now from the 5th to the 10th, Mercury forges a brilliant angle to Jupiter. Remember these two were collaborating brilliantly at the start of the year, but because they've moved on, this doesn't mean to say that you can't still prosper. And it could be something to do with your home where you have a, 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 stroke, a, a stroke of fortune or a really bright idea that can work out well. On the 8th, there's a full moon in your sign and it is going to be squaring up to Pluto. This is more difficult. The chances are that if a relationship isn't going as well as you want, you're going to be thinking about it very profoundly over the next two weeks. Pluto could see you revolting against what you can see, someone's lack of sensitivity or fairness to your needs around a relationship. It could be a partner, it could be a colleague, it could be a family member, it could be a friend, but there may be a need to be more assertive or resist someone's over uh, forcefulness or lack of sensitivity to you. On the 11th, Mercury makes its way into Aries, so we're really getting much more of a relationship vibe, and it too is going to be combining with Chiron. So how you think about your relationship is important here. Pluto could make you radically look at things, but Chiron could help you radically heal them if you put the energy in. On the 20th, the Sun moves into Taurus. It's going to be merging with Uranus, and also the new moon, which occurs on the 23rd, also has the electrifying energy of, Taurus, of Uranus alongside too. This is a time to really be open-minded about how you create revenue and income into your world, how you minimize long-term expenditure. If you are interested in being more entrepreneurial, this can produce some real results in the following week. Now, it is true to say that in week three, Mercury's forging a terrific angle to Mars. This can see you busy, and again, it could be in the home zone. So if being more entrepreneurial could be taking what has been a part-time interest into something more substantial, this is a great time to go forwards with it. The 25th, however, sees Pluto go into retrograde. This will go on until October the 4th. It happens every year. So some of the things that are to do with change in your world, linked to home family emotion, could slow down a bit. The 28th, however, Mercury makes a quick transit into Taurus, joins up with Uranus too. Again, you're being pushed to be as innovative and open-minded as possible about the things you share deeply with anyone else or about how you can improve your income. As you make your way into May, however, Libra, there is a, a magical development. On the 5th, the North Node, which is a notional point in the heavens, but is to do with the emotional pull uh, deep within us, inverses back into the sign of Gemini. It's going to be here for the rest of 220. Now, it was in 
cancer. So it was really working on your ambitions for some of last year. Now it's going to be much more to do with knowledge, travel, widening your horizons. And a desire to fulfill that is going to be important for you this year. I, I, I really do feel so. Now all month, Jupiter continues to combine with uh, Pluto. So despite Pluto tracking backwards, there's still the potential for changes. The seventh, however, does see a full moon, this one in Scorpio. But on the other side of the heavens, by the sun, is Mercury. So it could be that you need to think on your feet about um, balancing your uh, income and outgoings, but also perhaps there can be that dazzling idea that you're trying to work out somehow or another. Saturn goes into retrograde on the 11th, and like Pluto, when this happens, things do slow down, but initially it's in Aquarius. The inversion is going to see it go back into Capricorn on the 1st of July, but for now, it just means if there is a creative strand, you're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to roll your sleeves up. However, on the 12th, Mercury goes into Gemini, joining up with initially Venus and that North Node. So there could be a real desire to travel at this point or to be more exploratory in your approach to life in general. The 13th, however, does see Mars move into Pisces. If you want to really work hard on something, this usually would be a good transit, Mars through the sixth house. It's a bit more complex in Pisces because of the water. So Mars is not at its best here, but for you, you can only make hay with the hay, well, the straw that you're given, uh, so to speak. So uh, it can see you focusing a little bit more, working harder on key core aims. On the 13th, Venus, however, does go into a retrograde, which, as I said to you, is one of the complications. It just means that if you are chatting to someone at a distance who comes from a different culture, it might not necessarily be exactly a straight line journey, but still be open minded. The 14th, however, is profoundly important. Jupiter retrogrades and will do for four months. Again, like with Saturn and Pluto, things can slow down. And this, again, is to do with your home, family, and emotional situation. But you can still grow, but Jupiter retrograde is more about the inward journey rather than the material and physical outward journey. The 21st sees the Sun power into Gemini. So that's going to take on the challenge of Venus's retrograde. And on the 22nd, there's a fab new moon because it links actually very, very well with Saturn. So if there is something you want to learn, this combination will really help you in the following month. On the 29th of May, however, uh, Mercury does go into Cancer. I don't think it's its best location. If you think Mercury is about logic, whether it's in Gemini or it's in Virgo, in Cancer, um, the emotion of the moon ruled Cancer can blur the logic of Mercury. But for you, it's about your career. It's about how you link with the wider world. And perhaps you can use the medium of your sensitivity to people's emotions to frame your ideas or your presentation in quite a skillful way so you can turn it to an asset. Now, the first five days of June sees your ruler, uh, Venus, in a combination with the Sun. This is gorgeous. So even though Venus is tracking backwards, it still gives you the lovely opportunity to connect with someone new. You can come across in a beautiful way. You can showcase your true range of, of attributes, especially if it's outside work, if it's more to do with your interests. It is true to say that the first three weeks of June do see a mighty collision, or right angle, I should say, between Mars and the Sun. The sun for you is about expansion. Mars is about where you need to be taking responsibility. So you could get frustrated at times this month if there's too much work and not enough play. So try to find the balance. However, on the 5th, we have an annular uh, lunar eclipse, which does occur in Sagittarius, which is for you is how you think. But on the other side of the heavens, it's how you think at a higher level. It's more the idealistic, philosophical level of thinking. The uh, lunar eclipse is more in everyday communication. 
If you're thinking of travelling anywhere in the next couple of weeks, plan carefully. Equally, if you're looking at signing a document or an agreement, be very cautious, especially as this particular eclipse does join in with the angle of Mars, which itself then links with Neptune from the 9th to the 17th, which could really take the wind out of yourselves. You could feel defeated, deflated, demotivated, or feel that you're always the one doing all the sacrificing and no one else joins in and listens. But you know, you probably don't have a point. But if you do need to articulate how you feel, you'll need to do so clearly. On the 18th, Mercury retrogrades in Cancer. This may mean that there could be some complications in a career or worldly interaction in the second half of this month. The 21st sees the Sun, however, climb into Cancer. So you can counteract the retrograde by being clear, assertive, and confident in what you want to achieve. However, the 21st also sees an annular solar eclipse in Cancer, but it does forge a quincunx with Saturn in your sister air sign of Aquarius. So it's saying you can get ahead on the back of this in the next six months, but if you want to get ahead and really feel that it meets your more uh, creative needs, then don't necessarily follow the well-trodden path. You may need to be a bit more individualistic. If you're someone who's happy to fit in with rules and structures as pre-laid down, you can really thrive in the next six months. The 25th is great news. Venus ends that retrograde. That's something to really feel happy about. And the 28th, that key moment of the year that I told you about before, Mars moves into your opposite sign. Now it's going to be here through to the 6th of January 2021. It's also going to be forging an unbelievably powerful total solar eclipse in a great location for you in December, which you've got to look forward to. But for now, this is saying to you, if you are feeling trapped in any kind of relationship or just feeling that your boundaries aren't respected, this is your time to be firmer about them. But also if you want to bring some greater romance, even if it is raunchy and a bit more rugged interaction with someone else, then Mars will certainly help you in the last half of 2020. Which brings us into July Libra, which on the first day sees Saturn reversing back into the sign of Capricorn. But the good news is that for you particularly, because of the impact it's had on your home, emotional and family life, this is going to be the last sweep. And by the 17th of December, it moves into Aquarius, provides new challenges, but opportunities, but it will be out of a particularly tough zone. But there's no disguising that this month does have some power pack potential. In a very positive sense, the angle between your ruler Venus and Mars, which provides a backdrop for the whole of this month, is glorious when it comes to the potential for socialising, romance and connecting with the people that you really do have a sense of simpatico with. But there are other challenges. Because the Sun is in the sign of Cancer, this for you is very much to do with your worldly interaction. It's to do with your ambitions. It's to do with how people view you. This is known as your solar midheaven. Now, on the 5th, there is going to be an annular lunar eclipse in the opposite sign of Capricorn. So that brings up the polarity that was so much to the fore last year and really, quite frankly, impacted on your zodiac sign. But there is, from the 11th through to the 16th, an opposition between the Sun and Jupiter. But actually, this can be pretty good. If you're looking for property, it could give you an idea to get somewhere that's absolutely as you want, and you may break the bank in order to achieve that objective. And if there is a cautionary note, it's kind of like saying, well, uh, just factor in if your circumstances changed, how you would afford it. But also, this particular uh, opposition can see you shoot for the stars and 
persuade someone that you can take on a bigger and more capable role and you just need to be conscious of the impact it will have on the foundations of your existence. Now the 12th sees Mercury go forwards in your sector of career and success. So if there have been some delays about hearing about job applications or something hasn't been quite flowing along as you would like, that's obviously going to be advantageous. There is, however, a connection between the Sun and Pluto at the heart of this month, which is more challenging. Pluto in your fourth house is about the politics that go on at the heart of your existence. And the Sun in the tenth house is very much what you desire. It's your goals and ambitions. So someone close to you may be quite challenging about some of the things you want to achieve, may not be particularly supportive, or may, maybe someone's going to see you as having such a determination to get your own way that you won't uh, detract from the big mission that you're on. But sometimes in life we do have to be very single-minded, and this period of time could be one of those for you. The 20th sees the new moon in Cancer, which again can be usually fantastic for you to cast your uh, presence in a public sense in a more dynamic way. But it can also see your emotions closer to the surface. It's just encouraging you that if you are being ambitious, the goals that you're chasing need to be ones that you actually find make you happy. So if you were pu purely on a material path, then this can be a point to check that maybe you could realign, particularly as Saturn is lying on the other side of the heavens. So for the next month, I think if you are making that push for extra responsibilities to improve your position, then it could be a bit of a tough time where you're trying to balance uh, everybody in your world, whether it's your professional demands or your home-based ones. The 22nd, however, is a wonderful day because it sees the sun return home, moving into Leo, which for you is all about sociability. And that's something to really uh, savour. And with Venus and Mars forging that glorious alliance for you all this month, as long as you give yourself permission to not spend all of your time pursuing goals and ambitions, or taking on responsibilities, or being the leader, then there are going to be ample opportunities to be more playful, have sparks of attraction, and have some fun. As you make your way into August, there is a full moon which occurs on the 3rd. This is in the sign of Aquarius, which for you is very much about joy, and your time management is really coming under uh, pressure this month. And there is also a continuing angle between Mars and also Pluto, which goes from the 5th to the 22nd. Now, this is a kind of a bit of an impression that came from the Sun's opposition to Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto. But these two are much more aggressive together, if you like. It really suggests that you could come into some conflict at work with a line manager who tends to be a bit dogmatic, a bit overbearing, wants everything their own way. Perhaps it's the company or organisation you work for. And you may find yourself wanting to stand firm against this. But equally in the first 10 days, don't promise more than you can realistically deliver as Jupiter squares up to Mars. But on the 5th, Mercury does go into the sign of Leo. So I think that's a much happier transit. But it is going to... Uh, be moving on the 20th into Virgo, tucked up in your 12th solar house. But before then, Venus moves into Cancer. And actually, this can be a lovely transit for you because it's just saying if there have been tensions or there have been politics, try to use your natural diplomacy to unpick them. In fact, from the 11th through to the 21st, the Sun in Leo forges an awesome angle to Mars. So where your uh, energies are aligned in a positive direction where you feel uplifted or you're connecting to people who really uh, do positive things for your uh, sense of self, then there can be a surge forward of a very positive nature. However, on the 15th, Uranus does go into retrograde. Anything to do with those shared finances, your sense of freedom around your commitments, 
could make you feel a bit more inward, there could be a slowing down. The 19th sees the new moon embrace that Mars location. So this is terrific. So really through till about the 18th of September, this can really see you drive forwards in this part of the year. The 20th, however, Mercury, as I said, moves into Virgo, which it also rules. The 23rd, the Sun. This is your time of the year to reflect, to just throttle back a little bit and think about what life really means. Mars is also in a square with Saturn the last two weeks of this month. So if there is something that you want to achieve uh, around a, a professional situation and it isn't going quite as quickly as the Sun's angle with Mars is asking and suggesting it might, you may grind your teeth in frustration, but try to keep a sense of perspective. Now, Venus is actually forging an opposition to Pluto in the last week of this month. Someone could offer you something linked to work and it could seem very, very alluring. But what are their true motives? September sees a full moon on the 2nd in the sign of Pisces. And remember, this can be an area that's very important to you this year because of the moon's combination with Neptune. And, but this, again, is calling out to that Uranus location. So Uranus may be retrograde, but being open-minded about how you can go forwards around any close alliance or long-term finance or business and being open to new technology or innovation remains key. On the 6th, glorious, Venus, your ruler, climbs into the most joyful and sociable part of your scope. But on the same day, Mercury moves into your sign and they're going to be collaborating for the rest of this month. This is splendid. This can bring a real uplifting energy, but there is still some politics as Mars in its retrograde is clashing with Saturn for the whole of the month. So there may be something around your professional hopes or perhaps your personal life or home situation which is not going forwards quite as quickly as you would like, but this more outgoing, playful, and mixing and mingling angle between Venus and Mercury can pri provide some much needed light relief. On the 9th, as I said, Mercury retrograde, that is going to be why you have this transit lasting so long in the sign of Aries, your seventh house. But it is just a reminder that even if you are being a bit more demonstrative about what you want, your natural diplomacy is a good counterpoint to Mars in Aries, and don't forget to use it. The 13th, however, is something to celebrate as Jupiter goes forwards. The four months that it's been traveling backwards may have seen some real slowdown, or perhaps you've just felt a little bit more inward in general in your uh, activities and thinking and mode. On the 16th, however, the new moon in Virgo is a chance to embrace the hidden side of life, your subconscious, any kind of healing uh, to do with uh, natural therapies can be very good for you. And also just to give yourself some kind of spiritual and emotional detox. Give yourself the opportunity to do that. Now, Mercury in your sign is going to be clashing with Pluto in the last phase of this month. Just be aware that you could encounter a really dogmatic person who wants it all their own way and they could be quite close to you. On the 23rd, however, the sun returns home to your sign. Immediately, this is going to enthuse you with greater energy, drive, passion and help to bring you into the moment. Mercury, however, moves out of your sign on the 27th into uh, Scorpio, good for finances, you'd think, but it is going to go into a retrograde in October, which I'll tell you more about when I discuss October. But the 29th is worth celebrating because Saturn finally ends a retrograde. It's gone through three in the sign of Capricorn, which probably has been quite painful for you as it is around your emotions and family life. But that's the last one in Capricorn. And now it's going to be heading into Aquarius on the 17th of December for a two and a quarter year transit. This brings us to October, Libra, and we have some blue moons. Yes, on the first day of the month, there's a full moon in your opposite sign. 
And if you're not happy in a relationship, you're going to have your say in the following two weeks. The latter one occurs on the 31st, the last day of the month, but this is going to occur in Taurus. So that energy that's linking up with Uranus, the eighth house, comes into play. So on the third of this month, Venus moves into your 12th house. So you may go through a period of deep reflection around a relationship. And on the back of the full moon, if you really are feeling unhappy and the politics of the first three weeks of this month of Mars still aggravatingly grinding in its right angle to Pluto, then I think it's going to come out at this time. However, all this month, Neptune does continue that very spiritual angle to Jupiter. These two are the rulers of Pisces, and there is a chance here that you can shape your reality very differently, but it may require a degree of forgiveness. And I think if you're looking at things in a straight-on way, it may be hard to let go of any grumbles that you do have if you've been very sacrificing, not just this year, but for some years before, in a particular scenario where other people have not given back to you as you deserve. And your frustration about this can really be manifest from the 8th through to the 21st, as the Sun in your sign clashes with Jupiter, Pluto and Saturn in turn. Now Sun squared Jupiter is not too bad at all really, in fact it could see you in very generous, uh, a very generous uh, mind space, but the angle against Pluto and Saturn is much tougher. And also on the 14th, with Mercury going retrograde in your sector of resources, everyday finance, you need to work hard to make sure you're getting in any money that's owed to you. The new moon on the 16th in your sign would normally be a time of renewal, a time to give yourself a glamorous makeover, focus on the strands that are working well, and reinvigorate old strands that have lost a bit of momentum. But again, there could be some issue to do with family or home, which is blocking or inhibiting you, which can cause a lot of frustration. Fortunately, from the 18th to the 24th, Venus in that sheltered area forges a gorgeous link with Pluto. Someone actually, conversely, can be remarkably supportive and kind, which gives you an uplift. The 23rd sees the Sun go into Scorpio, linking with Mercury, and the hustle bustle of the Sun can help you to try to overcome the backward journey of Mercury, but by the 28th, Mercury rewinds into your sign. So if there has been a financial issue, is it because you're rethinking your approach, perhaps to a new innovative idea? Venus moves into your sign on the 28th, however, and this is a magical moment because this is very life-enforcing. You will feel better about yourself. And on the 31st, um, the full moon, which does occur in Taurus, ironically, which is also ruled by Venus, can see you thinking carefully about your relationships, but particularly aware about where your values match or differ from anyone you're involved with. But someone new could be entering your world as you make your way into November. Venus, in your own sign, is really quite sensational. So, as you come into November, don't be surprised if more than one admirer are beaten up after your door. It is also true to say that with that energy in the second solar house, your way of equating whether there could be any kind of meeting point between you is perhaps going to be re relating to your values. However, the third sees Mercury go forwards in your sign, and that's going to be a big shift, a big relief. Once it comes out of shadow, um, on the uh, 19th of the month, after it returns back into Scorpio on the 11th, I think the financial issue can start to work its way through very positively. Also on the 14th, Mars goes forwards. And after those grating clashes with Pluto, um, I think, and Saturn, it's going to be very much a relief that it is heading forwards in what can be an enormously positive location. On the 15th, there is a new moon in Scorpio, which does link into that beautiful link between Jupiter and Neptune. Perhaps 
you can attune your values and outlook to others in that compassionate way by not holding them to account because their values in some ways are different to yours. A bit of a letting go and sacrifice possible from that. The 22nd, however, sees the sun power into Sagittarius, which is all about passion, articulation of your ideas, being physically more active. Um, it can be very sociable. Venus moves into your second solar house on the same day. There could be the sound of ka as you come towards the end of this month and in the run up to Christmas, which of course would be enormously welcome. So right through to the 13th of December, more money can come in. However, on the 29th, Neptune also starts to go forward. So if you have had any guilt about what you haven't been doing, that you should be doing, that can ease. On the 30th, however, the annual lunar eclipse in Gemini points towards if you're traveling, perhaps uh, shopping for Christmas presents, perhaps for work, perhaps just purely for leisure. Try not to rush things too much and do consider any unexpected costs. Which brings us to December and the excitement mounts for you when Mercury moves on the 2nd to move into Sagittarius. It is in detriment in this transit, but I think broadly it's a good one for you. It should suggest the speeding up of thought, activity and interaction. Perfect for the party season if you're going to be sharing goodwill and, uh, and enjoyable moments with the people you're mixing and mingling with. The 14th, however, sees an astonishingly positive solar eclipse. It's total as well. It's in the sign of Sagittarius, but it links with Mars in a trine. And this is going to provide really supportive energy into the first five months of 21. But then on the 16th, Venus moves into this area. So things are really gathering speed as far as those social interactions. The 17th Saturn comes back into Aquarius where it's going to be for two and a quarter years, followed by Jupiter on the 20th. Now Saturn, wherever it goes, can be a wrecking ball. We have to be honest about this, but I think it's really good, as I said earlier in the presentation, that it's out of your sector of emotion. I think you're really going to appreciate this quite soon. And Jupiter moving into your fifth solar house is entirely um, life enforcing. It's very positive. It's much more risk taking. You're going to be feeling so much better as you head into 2021 with these two marching into Aquarius. It's true that the sun moves on the 21st into Capricorn along with Mercury and there's also a full moon in Cancer on the 31st. Well there's going to be another influence this year which suggests that some balance needs to be kept around that fourth solar house. So the move of Saturn and Juniper, uh, Jupiter are not going to be panaceas, but I think you're going to end this year feeling in a much better uh, place uh, spiritually, motivationally and energetically, especially with that solar eclipse. But you know, if you look back on 2020 and review the fact that Jupiter and Pluto were aligned so well for so long, that Mars had that massive transit in your sector of relating for six months and that Venus was beautifully located for four months, you really have been blessed in quite a big way. If you'd like to know more about how this impacts on you individually based on your time, date and place of birth, you can order your 12-month uh, forecast. If you buy it in uh, 2019, I'll give you the rest of 2019 free. If you buy it in 20, I'll give you the 12 months and the point of order, but there is 30% off. Please see the link beneath this video. But for now, good luck and goodbye.